You know, we need to get back to that where we're going to the house of God, not to hear the music, not to, you know, shake hands and all that, all that other stuff. I mean, all that stuff's good, but we come to the house of God to worship God. Come to the house of God to lift his name on high. And it doesn't matter if there's two or three, if we're gathered in his name, gathered for the purpose that he's called us to be here for, then he's going to have a work. He's going to have something done. He's going to touch a heart. He's going to change a life. We don't know what kind of effect that he, what he's got in store for us. We just have to come out ready to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And I'm going to turn over to Brother Johnny now. I know he's had a busy couple days uh, digging holes and everything else and uh, looking forward to what the Lord's got. If he's got a song, if he's just got a sermon, whatever he wants to do, I'm just going to give him his freedom. Brother Johnny. I'm just going to get into it. Um, last Sunday, God took me into these scriptures and I read them and he kind of began to speak to me about these these scriptures, and I've never had read this before or, or heard it read before. And I'm in uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 66. Isaiah chapter 66. And in my Bible, the passage is titled, True Worship and False. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, so I just want to share with you what God has been speaking to me about these things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 66, we'll start in the first verse. I like the way it starts off. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made. And all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. He who kills a bull is as, is as if he slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering as if he offers swine's blood. He who burns incense as if he bless, blesses an idol. Just if they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abomination, so will I choose their delusions and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. And when I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. Praise God. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. You brethren, your brethren who hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake. Let the Lord be glorified that ye may see your joy. But they shall be ashamed. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word, Lord, and we thank you for your insight, Jesus, God. I ask you, Lord, to bless this message and let it go forth and touch the ones that need to hear it in the name of Jesus. And I was thinking as I read these scriptures, and it said, the ones who had a poor and contrite spirit, those are the ones that he would look at. And it went on talking about the many, many different offerings that a man can offer, that they would bring their bull in and they would bring their lamb in and they would bring all this stuff in, but it would mean nothing to God but as a dog. It would mean nothing to God but as swine's blood. I thought about to myself, how many people walk up in the house of God and put their money in the offering pan or, or they stand up and they praise God in front of people but when they get at home behind closed doors they got nothing to offer God they have no relationship with God and to God it's just like offering a broke neck dog 
My God. And, but yet we think we got something covered up. We think we got something going on uh, because we come up in the house of God. Uh, we think because the pastor passed us on the back uh, or the brother and sister may shake our hands and hug our neck that we got it going on. Uh, but you're going straight to hell uh, because God does not look at you. He looks at the poor and contrite spirit. Amen. My God, my Amen. God. See, what you see in the church house is only about half of what Johnny Combs is like. You ought to see me at my house. I, I do it way better there uh, when I'm alone with God. Uh, I do it way better there uh, when I'm talking to my Savior. I do it way better there uh, when I'm talking to the one who delivered me. Hallelujah. I thought to myself, people have got it so messed up. The church world is so messed up, it's not even funny. Oh, but I've done this, and I've done that, and I gave here, and I was there every time a door opened, and you was other places every time their door opened too. Help me, God. Huh? The poor and the contrite spirit. I know I talk about my basement experience a lot. Huh? But that's where I got my salvation at. That's where I got my deliverance at. It was getting up every morning all by myself and bringing my bull to the offering, bringing my lamb to the offer, altar and offering it to God. It was my praise. You see, I was thanking him for not killing me. I was thanking him for not letting me die. I was thanking him for saving me and delivering me. And see, there's been other people that started out like me. But somewhere along the line, they lost their poor and their contrite spirit. Huh? They don't know how to worship anymore. They got a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I begin to feel very weak at the house tonight and very sick in my body. And I thought to myself, devil, I wouldn't let this stop me from building a fence, and I'm sure not going to let it stop me from preaching the word for the man who saved me and brought me to deliverance. I will continue to praise you just like day one. I won't be false anymore. I used to live a false life, sister. I'd come up in the house and play them drums and sing them songs and be just as wrong as two left feet. Come on, John. Good job, Brother Johnny. Good job. I can only tell it like it is. Can I? We let it go on. But God knows what a dead dog looks like. God knows what swine blood smells like. How many in the house has ever had somebody come up to you and hug your neck and tell you that they love you, but you knew it was just a flat-out lie and couldn't wait for them to take their hands off you? Anybody? If you got enough about your senses to sense that, what do you think God feels? Oh, I love you, Jesus. Love you, God. Huh? And live any old way we want to live. Say anything we want to say. Act the way that we want to act any old way we want to act. Huh? Nastiness. My God. I know I'm housed in this flesh, and I'll be housed in this flesh till I leave here. But I can have dominion over that. Huh? Can't I? I can keep my contrite spirit. I can keep my poor spirit and let God look upon me. I don't want to stink in the nostrils of God. 
Lord. Oh, hallelujah. But we'll come, not we, but some, will keep coming and keep coming. See, I, I, what I'm about, Pastor, is that there's a lost and dying world out here. There's drug addicts that need to be delivered. There's lost souls that need to be saved. That's where I'm at with this thing. It ain't nothing about handing out a hot dog or a free T-shirt or a snack pack. Come on over here, Jack Jack. I want to tell you about somebody that shed their blood for me and let it come down off a of Calvary and I took it, accepted it, and it set me free and he could do the same for you. That's what I'm about. That's what I'm about. I ain't got time to play games. I ain't got time. Oh, look at my lamb. Ain't my lamb pretty? Ain't my bull pretty? Huh? Come on. I mean, if I was a millionaire, you think it would be anything for me to throw $10,000 in the offering plate? No. Yep. Nothing. Look at me. Look at me. There's too much look at me out there. Huh? I want you to look at the one who saved me. Oh, well, he's my only hope. He's my only help. I told him, brother, if you don't help me, there is no help for me. Amen. Huh? I got to thinking about it. I've heard over the past week so many conversations about how you should dress, what you shouldn't wear, what you should wear, So I'm fed up to hear with it. I want to wear what I want to wear, like it or not. I want to make people happy, but I make Jesus happy more than anything. If you want to look at an outfit, we got a badge on a uniform that's causing a lot of trouble right now. We got priests that wear collars that ain't been nothing but child molesters for years. If you want to look at an outfit, I can put outfit after outfit after outfit in front of you and tell you a story about it. Go on down to Graceland and walk through Memphis, Tennessee, Graceland, and you'll see all the outfits that Elvis Presley wears. And that's all they are because the entertainer's gone. My God. Ah, the one that made them rule is gone. Amen. Come on. Go. Dress me any old way you want to dress me, but I better be dressed inside. I better have a contrite spirit and pour me before God. Hallelujah. Come on, John. I don't know. I thought, my God, you're going to go down here and preach this message? The fellowship, and I'm thinking I'm not preaching just to the people here. I'm preaching to that camera right back there too. There's people listening. My God, I'll say it any old way I want to. There's people watching and listening right now. I'm curling their toes back right now huh? because I'm stepping on them. I'm stepping on their church house. I'm stepping on their members. I'm stepping on their mistresses. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm stepping on their girlfriends. I'm stepping on their boyfriends. Oh, they got it all. Oh, they got the act down. They got the play down, but that's all it is. Huh? I want it to flow out of me, Sister Combs, just like it flowed out of Jesus' pores when he prayed, and to his sweat became as great drops of blood. I want it to flow out of me like that. I want to tell you something, sister. When you got something, you can get around somebody and they'll crave it. They'll want that peace. They'll want that joy. They'll want that contrite spirit. My God. Yep. They'll want it like a dope addict wants heroin. Yep. Amen. Huh? They may not like it because you got it, but they want it. Tell like it is, Sister Markle. Huh? Lots of folks don't like another person because who they are in God. But lots of folks don't like it, but they want it. Just can't get it. Huh? So they don't want to become meek and humble before God. Huh? Amen. Lord, when I go through the house, sister, and I turn on my music. I tell the Lord, I can't make it without you. I couldn't be here without you. I can't say it without you. I can't do it without you. I remind him who he is. I become poor and contrite. Amen. Come on. 
And then I smell good to them. I don't stink like a dead dog. Huh? I don't stink like old dried up pig blood. Oh, God. We got so much swine going on. I was coming down the road feeling a little funky. And I thought to myself, you must have got the Canavayada, whatever it's called, <laughs> the Canavara. And I said, well, praise God if I did. I've been, I haven't changed a thing since the pandemic hit. And I'm not bragging, but I ain't changed nothing. Nothing have I changed. Should I? Probably. But I'm just too ignorant. But I ain't changed nothing. If God can't protect me, what can a mask do? Now, I'm not saying don't wear your mask. Don't be stupid like Brother Johnny. I'm just saying he's the one I trust in. Daisy drives me crazy. And I drive her crazy. Won't you wear your gloves? Won't you wear your mask? She'll ask me. I said, I don't think of it. I just get out, pump gas, go in the store. I don't think of it. Well, you're going to get something. And I said, speak it, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot she's watching. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> but he is where my hope is. Amen. God is my help. And I want to stay poor and I want to stay contrite before him. I don't want no fakeness. I don't want no falseness. Whatever I have to bring to, to the offering, offer to offer him, I want him to be pleased with it. Amen. Huh? I want him to be pleased with it. <laughs> I mean, what good is it to, for somebody to come up and knowing good and well they can't stand you? See, he said here, let me read that again. Let me read that again. Just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abomination, so will I choose their delusions. The scripture tells you they was doing everything right by looking at it. They was bringing their dog, I mean not their dog, but they was bringing their bulls and their lambs yep. to the offer. But they chose their own delight and their own delusions. What good, what good is that? If you know that I don't like you, what good is it for me to, do to tell you I love you? No good. We've all had that happen to us. We've all had that happen to us. But yet people will do this to God. Love you, Jesus. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Ain't that what it says? Yep. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. Plain and simple. Huh? Amen. But we, the people, want to delight in their own abominations. And when I call them, they don't hear. I called you, and you didn't come. I wanted you. But you didn't want me. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. He, that means he strived with them. That means he, he tried to plead with them. Uh -huh. uh -huh, and they kept on. Out there brushing that wool on that lamb. Boy, I'm going to take this to the show. It's going to get a blue ribbon. Put this on the offering. Come on. I ain't going to let nobody know what I'm doing in the back room. Huh? I ain't going to let nobody know what I'm doing on the way to work at 6.30 in the morning when no one sees me. I'm just going to keep brushing that wool down here so I can offer that in front of everybody. Everybody see that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Am I preaching? Come on. Come on, John. Am I preaching? Amen. You take that suit and hang it up there, and when you let go of it, it just falls because that's all it is, cloth. It's what's inside that suit. Yep. Huh? It's what's inside that shirt. That's what's, that's what's important. The poor and the contrite spirit. The one that has a love for the lost and dying world. One that has a desire to see somebody set free. Hallelujah. I'll take you over here down here real close to Black Street Bridge and show you my daughter walking around breathing and living just fine. Because God told me if I'd serve him, he'd keep her. And she's kept. Bottom line. Amen. You can't color that. You can't change that. Huh? I've been saying it for a few years now. 
Thank you, God, for setting her free. Amen. Yeah, I know she just died last month or two weeks ago. Thank you, God, for delivering her. Praise you. Amen. Call those things that are not as though they were. Uh, life and death comes off my lips. <laughs> life and I call it saved. I call it delivered. And I call it set free. Amen. And I want to keep a poor and contrite spirit. Hallelujah. That's it, brother. All right. Thank you, Brother Johnny. Uh, let's all just come around the altar and let's have a good season of prayer. Uh